Welcome to Words of Europe, a handy and informed dictionary to understand the European Union universe, brought to you by BLEST, the lab in European studies at Bocconi University, Milan. The European Union is a fascinating entity. It is populated with challenges and animated by efforts to keep the political and the legal unity of a diverse group of peoples and states, often in times of global challenges. A good way of navigating this intriguing universe is to understand some of the key words used to describe the Union, its guiding principles and its attributions. In each episode of Words of Europe, a blessed researcher will introduce the meaning of those key words, leading us to better understand the underlying tensions and challenges. Today, we start with the word solidarity, explained by Maria Antonia Panaschi, a postdoc researcher at Blessed Bocconi. Maria Antonia Panaschi guides us in exploring the meaning of such word when it comes to strengthening bonds between states and to distributing responsibilities in the EU. What holds people together in modern societies? The concept of solidarity tries to answer this question, providing an explanation of how society works. Although one might intuitively define solidarity as the equivalent of fraternity, there is no shared understanding of what solidarity practically means, of what is owed to whom and under which conditions. Solidarity might be described as a floating signifier, a word that does not convey any precise meaning in generally accepted practice and that lends itself to different interpretations. Contrary to other ideas of modern political theory, solidarity remains a contested concept with a variety of semantic nuances and practices. The genealogy of this idea shows that solidarity is not only a sociological concept, the one explaining how societies work we are all familiar with, but it's also a legal notion of private law. Its etymological roots date back to Roman law, where the expression obligatio in solidum indicated an obligation that bound two or more people to its fulfillment. In practice, the original meaning of solidarity stems from the law of obligations, and its function, which was ensuring the payment of a debt, is still present in many civil law systems. However, this legal etymology of solidarity is disconnected from its most common practice. Over time, in particular after the French Revolution, solidarity assumed a different and political meaning. It stopped being confined to the legal imaginary and became a political idea and practice which accompanied the emergence of welfare capitalism. It became the sociological concept we are all used to think of. Solidarity still maintained a relational component because it was still linked with that, which is basically a relationship between two or more people, but instead of being situated in the sphere of contractual relations and private debt, solidarity became part of the conceptual grammar and symbolic language of the modern welfare state and of its incipient public sphere. In modern states, indeed, solidarity commitments are undertaken outside the contractual sphere and are mediated by public law. One of the mandates of the state is to operate social distribution of services and benefits. Public debt is the result of social expenditure for such entitlements, which aim at the achievement of equality between individuals. Solidarity, then, seems to be caught between two different worlds, the world of private obligations from where it originated and where it has a merely transactional meaning, and the world of public duties, where it's the principle that underpins the welfare state. In both worlds, solidarity shows intertwinement with that, but in the second world, it is a device for redistribution and equality. It is social solidarity, 
which consists in the duty to pay taxes and social security contributions, for instance. In this public sphere, individuals are not just economic actors, but equal members of a political community. And bonds of solidarity between members of this political community are forged by the concept of citizenship. Citizenship is the historical trick that has been used to justify horizontal solidarity between members of a political community, or as someone has cynically said, to justify class stratification. This trick, citizenship, can be described as a feeling of belonging to the same national community. But if the conceptual landscape for solidarity is the nation, and solidarity is a sociological concept, the one pertaining to society we all as citizens are accustomed to, what does it have to do with the European Union? Is there a European society to which the principle of solidarity as a mean for distribution applies? Can the European Union be not just a place of tradable commodities, but also a civilization project beyond the internal market? In the mainstream narrative, solidarity is often invoked as a solution to the challenges faced by the European Union. But despite the rhetorical consensus on the need for more solidarity, and despite the fact that solidarity is mentioned in the EU treaties as a fundamental value, there is little agreement on what solidarity means or should mean in the European constitutional order. The problem lies in the multi-layered constitutional dimension of the European Union which comprises both member states and individuals. If solidarity in the European Union exclusively regards member states and their horizontal obligations, then solidarity might have the contractual meaning it has in the world of civil law obligations. It might consist in the duty to step in to help another country repay its debt. For instance, this is what happened during the Eurozone crisis with the bailouts. Lending money was a form of solidarity. But if we construct the European Union as a polity where individuals have agency as citizens, a European notion of solidarity would be something that entails also mutual commitments among Union citizens. Solidarity in this scenario would assume a thicker meaning, like the one it has in the nation state. This thicker conception would open up a genuine transnational space of social solidarity with a mutualized European debt and common fiscal rules. The constitutional configurations of the European Union, how we conceptualize it, informs the way we can rework a transnational notion of solidarity. The European Union challenges our way to imagine and talk about social solidarity. It challenges the traditional side of social solidarity, which has long been the nation state, and it also challenges the concept of citizenship itself, which is a national artifact. But as every artifact, citizenship unveils a collective fiction. Nations are imaginary communities. For this reason, nothing prevents us from imagining new forms of social solidarity with our fellow European citizens, forms of solidarity that go beyond the nation state. This was Words of Europe, a podcast about the key words that describe Europe from BLEST, the lab in European studies of Bocconi University, Milan. To be notified about new episodes, follow Words of Europe on Spotify, Apple Podcasts or Spreaker.